I always tell people when I'm talking, when I'm presenting a flip classroom, is that the idea of a flip is not so much a physical change in your classroom, it's a mental switch that you need to make. And that can be very, very difficult to do, especially for those of you who've been teaching 10, 15, 20 years. Um, I mean, I, I taught one year and then switched, so I didn't really have a whole lot of bad habits I needed to break. So I'm very fortunate in that sense. But making the, again, the mental decision, intentional decision to switch the way you treat your classroom um, is, is really going to be a big, big step to moving towards something that's more effective and more engaging and more productive for every single student that ever walks through your classroom. So this is how I get my feedback to my students. Uh, my first Jing, um, I timed out three times. So, uh, <clears throat> and it was on a thesis statement. Okay, so that should tell you something right there. That's a one sentence thing, a ninth grade level thesis statement. And I timed out three times. It, it took me about three months to get it down to where I was really just able to pull it up and just crank them out. And the students like it. They like hearing me read through their papers. They get to hear my feedback, good, bad, or indifferent. Sometimes I'll read a sentence and go, I'm lost. And that's what I would say to him if I was sitting face to face with them having a conversation. You know, if I take a test four times, eventually I'll get like an 80 on it. Well, you know, with the, with the software, with the Moodle I had, it's changing the problems every time. You never get to memorize the answers. But I had kids taking tests seven and eight and nine times. And those are the kids that, you know, you back up and you sit down and you go, okay, you're not learning it, you're not getting this. And had time. So I backed off, I limited it to like three attempts. And so they would still blow the first one. And then, they got a little more serious about number two and number three, whatever it was they got, they got, and I had to move. Even if they had mastered it, they needed to go. But the kids caught on real quick and that wasn't an issue later on. By the time they're juniors, I expect them to have some flexibility and take some responsibility for themselves. I do not require that they watch my video. I do not require that they do my worksheets. They still have to do all my labs. They still have to do all my inquiry-based activities, but anything that requires direct instruction or kind of drill and kill, it's optional. Do as many problems as you need to get it. If you can do the first one and the last one and you get it, be done. As long as you can prove to me that you've gotten it, get it. Don't do 20 problems if you don't need to do 20 problems. That's a waste of your time and mine. I was kind of like John. I first started this very type A, like you have to do this now, but as I went through the year, I became more like Aaron because I realized that if a student got it in my class, if they understood the chemistry and do it at home, if they were working on history or economics or something else that they just needed time to work on, I realized that, that kid got to go to sleep two hours earlier because they could work on something else in my classroom.